As mentioned in the introduction, when working with parametric composition, um, we work with various elements of a musical phrase. And the first of those elements I want to dive deeper into are the lengths. And once again, we can find them um, in the introduction to OMN document, which you find in the document folder on the right side under OMN the language. And this really shows you all the details of the different lengths you can use, um, the different symbols and and the syntax to denotate lengths. Um, so I won't go too deep into that, but I'll show you the very basics, which we can actually see right here. So we see here the first method of, of uh, showing lengths is just using these fractions, one fourth for a quarter note, an eight note we have here. And then here we have an eight note rest denotated with the minus in front. We have 16 notes, etc. So if I press Command E, I will see this in the listener below. And in the listener, we always see the output of any of any line of code we evaluate, um, pressing Command E for evaluate. Um, so we can do the same with this line right here. And we can see that this also shows just the same in the in the uh, listener, uh, because it's not really a function, right? So it's this literal syntax that we're using right here. So you can see we can both use a Q, a Q for a quarter note, uh, E for an eighth note, or we can notate it like this. Generally, I prefer the second one because it's a little bit faster to type. Um, you can also see this equal sign here, which means that it's going to uh, repeat the last symbol. And here we have our minus again, which again is a rest. So we can listen to this uh, by pressing Command 1, and then we can see it as well. So that's the rhythm that we're working with. And here we have the other one, which indeed is exactly the same. So if we want to uh, use these lengths later on, I can set them to a variable. And uh, again, we did this with set F in Lisp. So I say set F, then I need to give it a name. So I can say length one, uh, pretty much all um, characters are, are possible in, in these variable names. And now, um, Basically, I can evaluate this again. We see again the output at the bottom, but now later on I could use it. I could write here length one and evaluate it. And we can see that we still get the length uh, values there. So it's now stored within our environment, as we say. Uh, I don't need to do that for right now. I just wanted to show that. Now, these parentheses here um, is, are very common in Lisp. We use lots of them. Um, um, in the case of lengths, we can use them to separate our lengths into different bars. So to do that, you start another nested list within this list. So if I add another parenthesis here at the beginning and then another one here at the end, and then I can open a new list. And let's say I just want four quarter notes. I can do something like this, or I could do something like this to repeat the last one. Now, if I evaluate this, we can see the same output here at the bottom, and I can listen to it as well. So you can see that now four quarter notes have been added. If you're wondering about the, the pitch that we're hearing, we're, we're not specifying any pitch, but if we go to the settings right here, we have all the audition um, defaults basically so the default tempo that i listened to when i press command one is 108 the default length is 14 it doesn't apply right now but it applies when we work with pitches and the pitch that we hear um, is c4 um, so those are just the the standards there so that's a little bit for the um, for the syntax here. In terms of evaluation, um, remember you can always right click on the end and you can either evaluate the score. We haven't we haven't gotten to that point yet. We don't really have a score. What we are working with so far are snippets, and those are here. So we can uh, with command one. That's this command. We show the snippet in notation. We can also show them in voices if we have multiple uh, voices. We can show them in the MIDI player with command three and just listening to them. Uh, command four. Just focus on these four for right now. They will uh, serve you in, in most cases. In 99% in of the cases, I'll just go with notation. But if you prefer to see everything in a MIDI editor, we do command three. Um, my MIDI editor opens on a different screen, but it is actually there. Let me resize it a little bit. The nice thing with these windows is when they close, they will always open at the last position when they were closed from. So I can do this again. Press Command 3. 
All right, so that's for the basic length syntax. Now we can get into the functions. And let's go with the first function, which is called gen length. I mean, it's not the first function, it's the first function that I chose to talk about. So um, with all of these functions, as I mentioned, we can select them and do command D. And then this puts it in the search window and we can find the one that we are looking for. We can zoom in a little bit in the documents, either with command plus or by right clicking and zooming in. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. So here we can see the arguments that this function takes. So this starts with a numerator and a denominator. And then it has uh, this at or ampersand key here. What this means, and you'll see this in every every function that you, uh, pretty much every function that you go with, um, these are everything that comes after key are keyword arguments. And that uh, we don't need to specify those. They are optional arguments. The ones before that we also, we always need to specify. So if I take this function and let's open a list here and I give it just one argument and then I close it and I try to evaluate it we run into our first error here into the into the listener. Um, and it says that the, it does not match the definition, uh, basically meaning you're using it wrong. So we have to pay a little bit attention to that. Now, if we read a little bit further here, we can see, okay, what does this function do? Gen length is a powerful tool for generating series of length values by multiplying a list of denominators with the numerators. So you can see that the denominators are the second argument here. So let's um, add a second argument. Let's say 16, for example. And then let's specify a list here for the numerators. So in this case, the um, this value here, the 16th, this is the denominator and it, it gets multiplied uh, by the numerators, which is this first list. So this should actually give us a slowing down kind of rhythm. I can evaluate it first or I can just press command one right away. All right, and that seems to work. Now we can increase this here. Let's say four, six, eight, 10, 12, etc. So you can see that even though this looks like multiple arguments, it's only being perceived as one argument because we put it inside a list. And it's the same for the second one. And this is a very common way um, of specifying multiple values for one argument. This, you would use a list for that. So similarly, I can add here a 32 to get um, a longer output here. make that a little bit shorter. So that's for uh, gen length. There are some other optional arguments. For example, you can use random order. And to specify those keyword arguments, we use this uh, colon and then the name of the, of the uh, argument. So random order in this case. And then we can see that we can set this to, that the default is nil, but we can set it to true as well. So let's do that. And now it will randomize the order of the output. All right, let's move on to a very simple function, which is called QL, which stands for quick length. I would almost not even call it a function because the only thing it does is it allows you to specify how much of each um, note duration you want. So you can say, for example, all right, I want four eight notes and I want two 16 notes. Um, let's just evaluate that. So that does indeed seem to work. Um, we can also, we haven't talked about tri triplets yet. So we can do eight triplet notes like this. Um, just a T for triplet. Then we can say we want four half notes um, and maybe we want three quarter note rests. Remember with the, with the little dash there. So just a very simple function there. Um, then the next one, which is definitely not so simple, is called the gen tuplet. And this one allows you to make fairly uh, complex rhythms. Um, and as the name implies, work with 
work with the tuplets in a more convenient way. As you can see, it, it takes quite a lot of arguments um, that we need to specify. So the first one is a lower multiplier, then we have an upper multiplier, then we can say whether we want to divide them, I will say no for now, so an n. Then uh, we can say do we want rest positions, I'll say no for now as well. Then we can specify the um, the length of the bar that we want, let's say four, and then the actual tuplet value. So all of this we need to specify for it to work. Um, let's let's take those very very uh, basic settings first. Press Command E. Now we can see the output at the bottom there. I press Command One. So we can see that indeed it creates a septuplet there. Um, I could also make that a triplet by changing this to three. Um, or a quintuplet and now with these values here we can say all right i um let, let's actually look at the documentation so for the second n there this is the rest um that would be the one two three fourth argument would be rest and we can see that we can say there all right i want a rest at the start one at the end one in the center at the outer positions or at random so let's try a couple of those let's try having a rest at the start you can see that that works, um, maybe one at the end as well, or at the outer positions, or in the center. So you can see that these, these things can be uh, tricky to think about when you, when you do um, a manual kind of syntax. But with this function, it will make sure that everything matches because you can specify the total duration here. Um, and that, that's the nice thing about this function. And you, and you can come up with uh, very complex rhythms because of that. Always with the documentation, there are um, many examples of this um, of, of, of these functions and how to use them. Uh, another one that's interesting, for example, is Gen Cartesian, it's called. Gen Length Cartesian, it's called. Um, and this, you can see, has very similar syntax here. Um, and it comes up with Cartesian, a Cartesian product, which you might remember from your mathematic class. All right, so that's for Gen Tuplet, um, just as a basic introduction. Then let's go for uh, one very powerful one, one that uh, probably you'll use a lot, which is called Rhythm Series. And um, uh, let's once again take the documentation for this as well, um, because I also don't remember <laughs> always the order of the arguments. We can see here that um, the first value here is the number of generated lists. Let's set that to four. Then we have the number of nodes per list. Let's say I want three. Then what should our span or what should our uh, signature be? I will go with a three eight for now. Um, and then just let's leave it at that for now. That's all that we need. Let's listen to that. Right, so you can see that it did uh, listen to us. And what it did, it was created four different lists um, based on the first argument. Then it has three nodes per list um, and it's in 3.8. So that way, if we, like those, those things that we specify, those are rules, but there's of course not only one option. So if we evaluate this function over and over, You can see that the output is always different. And a lot of functions in Opus Modus are designed to be different every time you evaluate them. And this is what creates that uh, randomness, which you can, um, which, which will, for me at least, uh, create very unique new compositions. They will generate things that otherwise you wouldn't have thought about. Now, if that makes you panic a little bit, I completely understand that because that's also what it did with me. Because you'd be thinking, well, but what if, if I have something I really like, um, how do I keep that? Well, that's what the seed argument is for. And this is included in almost every function. It's always an optional argument. Um, so it's a keyword argument, which means we can specify it like such. And with seed, we can just give it a number, can be any number, and it will always be fixed to that value. So if I now uh, evaluate this again, it will always be the same. And in fact, you can at the top of your uh, score, 
you can provide in its seed, you give it a certain value and all the seeds in the score will then be fixed to that number. What means what that means is that once you're done with the score, you could change your init seed and uh, you, <laughs> you cannot do that. You have to use numbers um, and you will get a different score, but within the same rules that you specified. And, and this is a really powerful thing. We'll, we'll get a little bit deeper into that later. For now, um, just pay attention to the, to the seed argument here uh, for every function to fix certain things. Um, let's see if there's something else we can do here. Um, and we'll talk about this randomness more later on. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's a tricky concept if you're not used to it, um, but very powerful. So we can also see that um, we have a probability here that we, that we can specify, um, and we have a length a list that we can spe specify. So you can see here the default uh, is to have notes. Um, this, by the way, is a dotted quarter note. We haven't uh, we haven't looked at that yet, um, but that's possible. We also have double dotted quarter notes. So if I want to do something tricky, I can say uh, Q dotted uh, half note uh, half note double dotted. So a dot, uh, just as in regular notation, means add half of the value of the of the length to the length, and then another dot means add half of the value of this previous half of the value as well. Um, and then, um, let's say eight note, and let's say a triplet maybe. And there we get an error, and the reason for that is because I don't specify the length here. This is again a keyword argument. So with that, we can tweak things even further. Now, um, I will remove this because it looks a little bit complicated and it's really not necessary for this function. Um, so just try to do it like that. This rhythm series and the gen length, um, if you're gonna learn any of them, probably start with those two because they're very flexible um, and fairly easy to use as well. One of my personal favorites, however, is the polygon rhythm. I've showed it in a couple of other videos as well. And polygon rhythm allows you to create um, a polygon shape, a shape with multiple sides, um, which which uh, shows, denotes your rhythm. So let's take a look at the, the arguments there, polygon rhythm. We can see we have the number, um, the number of the sides of the polygon. So let's say 12. Then we have the total length, let's say 16. And then we have a starting point, let's say three. Now, if I um, evaluate that first, we can see we get the rhythm here in the listener. I can also see it in my notation. But you might be thinking, where is this polygon then? Well, if we go a little bit further down below here, we can see these um, actual polygon shapes being uh, visualized. And <clears throat> the way this is being done here is by using a circle rhythm plot. And we haven't talked about um, plotting yet. Uh, it's also something we're probably not going to do in this, um, in this series. Um, but just so you know, there's a lot of uh, ways to visualize uh, data inside Opus Modus, and we can find uh, various plot functions inside the, inside the functions here. But we can also find this if we right click and we go to graph. So here, for example, I can plot this polygon rhythm in numbers, and then you see that we get this shape. Um, I can also try to plot it in um, lengths, for example, that should work. Now keep in mind that plotting doesn't always work. It, it really depends on the data that you give it. So for example, if I take this a quick length function here and I go graph numbers, that should work. But if I go uh, graph maybe pitches, that doesn't work and we get an error again at the at the bottom right here. Now for this polygon, the graph that's uh, being used is what's called the circle rhythm plot. Um, uh, this we could see right here. So you can see that this function in this case is wrapped inside another function. So um, we can first try to do this ourselves by going to graph and then circle rhythm. Um, and that works, but there's something a little bit odd. We can see that there's only um, 12 points here, and we said that we want 16. And that's because this circle rhythm plot, it doesn't really know about the data that we give it. So um, the default of 12 would be used. So if we don't want that, we can go circle rhythm plot. We just write it out 
rather than using the sort of built-in function. And then we can actually specify the number of points that we want, 16. Um, and now it uh, looks correct. And now you can see that if I start changing things here, like the number of points, um, that it updates the graph as well. So another thing that might be confusing here is that we say, all right, I want to start at point three, right? We could see in the documentation that um, the third argument there is the start, and this is an integer or starting point. Um, but we already see a point at two, and that's because this thing wraps around. So it actually does a start here, but um, from there it dr draws five points randomly within this space. So it could very well be that a point ends up there. It basically rotates the graph. So that's a lot of talking um, for one function. Uh, I'll just show you very quickly what this what this can do and how powerful it is. We can say, for example, I want 12 positions out of 16. Um, or I can say I want 12 positions out of 24, which would give us triplets. Right, or I can make this value 12 and I can make this one 3 and I can make it start at the first point. Or let's say 9, a little bit more. So a very quick way to come up uh, with rhythms. And, and I do really like that we can visualize this. We can even, if you go a little bit further, visualize this for multiple instruments. So here, for example, we see the, the polygon shapes for a, a bass drum. So a kick drum, a snare drum, a hi-hat, and I think an open hi-hat. I'm not quite sure. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, that's a, that's a very nice way to visualize this. You can also see um, that we have a pitch argument there, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I wasn't going to talk about pitch in this series, um, or I will talk about it in this series, but not in this video. It's going to be the next video. Um, but just to quickly show you, you can do something like this. Um, uh, let's go with it. If something like this as well. We can give it a list of pitches, and then uh, this rhythm will will use those pitches when we evaluate it. Right, so that's already uh, fairly beautiful. Um, and then, we, of course, we can set a C to that as well, so we fix it to a certain value. And now it will always be the same. So that's the polygon rhythm. Um, then we continue with the quantize function, which is an interesting one. It's not one that I've um, used a lot personally, but I've heard it's very powerful. So I want to start experimenting with it a little bit more. What it allows us to do is um, it finds the, um, well, let's just read it. It analyzes the duration of each value in the list and returns the best possible grouping of beats and fractions of beats. So basically we can get, give it a bunch of random points and we'll try to um, analyze what good uh, node positions for this are. And we can, we can specify the, the values that we want there. So as an example, I can say I want to use the gen noise function. We haven't used the noise function yet, I believe. Um, it uh, just creates uh, noise basically. So we can visualize things pressing shift option command one, and then we can see that noise. That's exactly the same as using this graph numbers option. That's shift option command one, two for OMN, three for lengths, four for pitches, etc. So now you can see that this creates a noise shape, and noise is basically all random numbers. Um, at random frequencies. If you th think about audio noise, we can give this a very high value as well. And then we can see 127 points. So um, in the output, as you can see, let's go with a value of 12. Um, it outputs 12 random numbers between 0 and 1. We can actually quickly go to gen noise um, to see that. You can see that the scale is uh, a range of, of uh, um, 1.0. We can actually set scale to 10 for example then we'll generate random numbers in between 0 and 10. So this we use and we, and we give it to the quantize function and then uh, for the quantize function itself we would specify a um, list of, of um, lengths. So let's go with for example let's start simple maybe we do 2 and 4 and then we close the function Now we can change the, uh, the number of values here. We can try true and eight. Two and one. 
16 values. So you can see it automatically finds a, a good grouping there. So that the notation actually looks nice. Um, so that's for the quantize. And then we finally get into the vectors. And this I'm excited to talk about. I really like vectors. They are, we can use them with many different materials and that's what makes them very powerful and good to learn about. Um, so as an example, we have a vector to length function, which takes a vector and uh, you guessed it, it will turn it into length values. So we give this an actual length value. Um, we give it some more arguments. Let's actually find the definition of them. Um, so we have our actually length value that we want. And then we have, uh, again, our multipliers. And then we have our vector. Now, if you think what is a vector, then you're in luck because we just talked about it. The gen noise is actually a vector. And a vector is, is um, a way of generating numbers. It's, it's, it's nothing more than that. So if we had something like this, this can be considered a vector, this number here. And we have many. We have gen sign, we have gen noise, uh, we have uh, different types of noise, like a Gaussian noise. Let's, let's take a look here. Gaussian noise, pink noise. Um, and we have, if we go to the functions itself, we have at the bottom here, we can find vectors and we can find our arrays, um, conversions, so vector to this or that. Um, we can smooth them, round them, convert them to envelopes, etc. cetera. Um, so let's, let's go with this example of the vector to length and let's just close the function. And then we can see that our noises have, have now, like these random numbers that we mm. saw before, if I do if I do a command E on this, you can see that this has been converted to a certain length symbol. We can set this to eight as well. Like these are being multiplied, which is why uh, we see a different node value there. So of course you can, uh, with this, you can very quickly come up with uh, very long lists of lengths. So that's a nice one to know about. That's vector to length. And then we also have vector map, um, which does something similar, but slightly different. Um, here we specify uh, multiple nodes that we want. So we can actually give it a list. So we can 16, eight, uh, quarter node, why not? Um, and then we can, let's use a different vector. Let's use gen sign. Uh, let's use 128 values and um, what we see with the six here that's the that's the frequency of the sign and the one is the amplitude so the first one is the resolution it's basically how how well defined um, the sign is and then we have the frequency six so it means that's just inverse and then we have the amplitude we can again visualize this so we can see that we do get indeed uh, six cycles we can also see here if I lower the resolution of the wave, it becomes not so shiny anymore. Um, let's go with one cycle and you can see that it starts to break down. And after a while, you actually start to get square waves. If I go, I think with four points, we get a triangle and then let's go with two. And that's because it doesn't have enough points to actually make a smooth kind of shape. So, um, the resolution is important if we really want to get a sine wave. Let's do that once more. Now we're back to a sine. Now what we're doing, we take this vector and we map it to either sixth, eight, uh, 16th, 8th or quarter notes. So let's um, evaluate the score. So you can see that it actually starts to, to uh, build up. So I can actually try to use uh, 16th, 8th, quarter, half notes. I can increase the speed here a little bit and then evaluate that again. So maybe it's a little bit difficult to see, but um, you should see that here it speeds up. So the notes values become higher and higher and higher, and then it slows down again. So it's, it's literally taking this motion and then mapping it to these notes divisions. If we want to make this smoother, we can add like, for, for example, 16, 16 dotted, eight, eight dotted, a Q, Q dotted, F, et cetera, to make it a little bit more smooth. And let's set the frequencies a little bit faster as well. Uh, 
and then it's going to slow down again. That's a little bit co complicated to visualize right now, but um, and also why would you want to do that? Um, I have no idea. Maybe some sort of experimental project <laughs> you're working on, but just to show how the vector map actually functions internally. Now, um, so far we have uh, used all these functions, but we haven't really um, we haven't really combined any of them. We haven't set them through two variables. So let's say we want to actually create a, a rhythm for our piece and we want to start using these functions and maybe we want to use a couple of different ones. So for that we have to um, first use variables. So I'm gonna call the first one um, R1 for rhythm one. And for this one, let's use the polygon rhythm. Polygon rhythm, again, because it is my favorite. Uh, we have to start with the parentheses there. If it's uh, not turning blue, then, then you're doing something wrong. Um, so we can set this one um, to R1 and listen to this as well. Now, let's say I want to repeat this shape four times because I want four bars. What um, I could do is simply repeat this function four times. That will not be very uh, efficient. So a way better way of doing that is using gen uh, repeat and this what it does is um, you give it a number of repeats in my case I want four and then you give it a function so if we go to gen repeat the documentation you can see that um, it takes a number and then a sequence so this is the sequence here uh, which is being outputted to gen repeat so in this case if I press command E we can see that this is the sequence and then gen repeat will repeat that four times so you get four times exactly the same sequence which is kind of funky in this case. We might not want that though. What we might want to do is not take the output of this list and then simply repeat it four times. We might actually want to evaluate this function four times. Because remember, every time we evaluate the polygon rhythm, if we don't give it a seed value, it will be a different rhythm every time. So if we want to do that, we would use gen loop instead. And gen loop will actually keep evaluating the function. So now all the four bars will be different. Right? That's a slightly more um, advanced uh, advanced function. We have gen loop and we have gen evo. And you can see that they become green. This should be a sign to you that they do something differently, which in this case is, is evaluating stuff. All right, so let's um, create another variable, R2. And for this one, let's maybe use a vector to length. And uh, let's go with one sixteen nodes. And... Um, what else? Let's just use what we had before as well. Um, or actually, let's keep it a little bit simpler and then we give it our gen noise again. So that's another one. And um, every time I'm, I'm finishing a, a variable like this or a function, I press Command E to put it in the system. If I don't do that and I try to evaluate this variable, I get an error. So it has to be put in the environment, which is not something you know from uh, languages like Python or, or anything like that. But in Lisp, we need to do that. So um, let's also choose let's do one more let's do rhythm three or three and for this let's use our quick length function simply because it's quick and let's say we want four quarter notes um why not uh, maybe that's a little bit boring let's say for eight notes and two sixteen notes uh five eight notes and maybe three dotted eight notes Right, let's see if we didn't make any mistakes there. I did. This needs to be separated. All right, so we get a, a very weird time signature there, and that's exactly what we want, because with, when we generate lengths, um, we can, of course, end up, especially when you use things like noise, it's very easy to end up with um, strange time signatures like that, because basically open mode is trying to guess here what the time signature is. So um, to work with that, um, there are a couple of techniques. Uh, first, what we want to do um, for these three rhythms that we have right now, this one, this one, and this one, I want to combine all of them. And for that, I can use the assemble seek function. 
assemble sequence and you simply pass all the other arguments um, or the variables that you want in there. So now it has merged all of them together. Right? And you can see that all the time signatures are very weird here. And that's because these, these bars have different lengths and they're, they're sort of generated haphazardly, haphazardly, I should say. Um, so yeah, you, you end up with some strange stuff there. So the first thing we're going to do to deal with that is we're going to flatten this list. And flatten is a, a built-in Lisp function. It basically takes out all the sublists and it just makes one long single list. So with flatten, we get a little bit less of those odd time signatures. And you can see in the listener that we get just one long list. So that's the first step. Let's set this equal to a variable as well. Let's call it Rai for rhythm and then evaluate that. Um, and then one thing that we can do sort of as a nice in between is um, I want to show one more uh, length function, um, which is called length weight. And let's use a new variable name for this and uh, write out that function length weight. And this function allows us to um, to weigh the the rhythm more towards either rests or lengths. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that. So the first argument it takes is the rhythm itself. And then we have the weight argument where we can give it a list, let's say 16, four. And then let's evaluate this. And you can see that there's quite a lot of um, notes in there in this case. Let's try to reverse this. Let's say um, four, 16. And now we get much more rests. Um, that's because we're weighing everything more towards the um, towards the rest. So if I do, for example, 10, 10 here, it should, we should get a 50% ratio of um, of length versus rest. Where if if I do a one nine, we get much more rests. And if I do nine one, we get much more lengths. It's just a, a interesting function i thought uh, to quickly show you length weight is called you can see that the weight is a two integer list the first value is the weight of the node length the second value is the weight of the rest length weight you might know from machine learning or something like that it's the uh, it's the probability that it will happen basically so um that's not very well explained don't quote me on that so th that's for um for the length weight function just as a quick extra i'll, I'll set it to a little bit reasonable values so let's do I don't know, let's do something like 16, 12, 18, 12. We can freely mess around with those numbers. I'll go a little bit more towards the lengths. Something like that is fine. Um, now, we still have the uh, issue that we don't have proper bar numbers. Um, so for that, we're going to use a very important function, which is called fit to span. And there are multiple span functions inside Opus Modus. Um, get min span, get span, length span, fit to span. And that's the one we're going to use. So what this allows us to do is it uh, allows us to set a certain length and we can fit it to that. So in the case of our rhythm, we can say I want to fit it to eight bars basically. And then you simply give it the name of the argument. And now you can see that we end up with exactly eight bars. So if we had this function before, um, we have seven bars and a little bit. <laughs> That's not going to be practical. So with this one here, we have exactly eight round bars. Now, um, we can also set that to one, one, which will give us only one bar, or we can set it to 16, one, which will give us the rhythm. And then it will just add empty bars at the end to fit it to the span that you specify a very vital function to know about. Um, let's set this to a variable as well. Let's call it fit. Um, um, then what we can see in the output here is that even though everything is exactly uh, the length of, in this case, 16 bars, let's go back to eight bars, um, we still have a single long list because we flattened it. And it can be convenient to have all the material within uh, bars within that list. So to do that, we commonly use the function OMN to oh, caps lock omn to time signature signature um, and we give it the sequence that we want to fit into a time signature and then we simply give it the time signature 
um, notation. So if we do this, we can see that now we get a proper time signature. We get our bar numbers there, whereas here, if we evaluate it, um, we can see this, this single list and, and uh, the notation viewer actually tries to guess the time signature. But uh, with the OMN2 time signature, you can see that we actually have nested lists right now. Um, which will become very useful later on. Um, this has also consequences for other functions, like a very uh, foundational function, for example, is length, which allows us to check what the length of a list is. So if we run length on fit, we can see that we have a length of 51. That's because there are 51 either rests or nodes within this list. But if we, um, let's, if we run length on this function, we can see that we have eight because it's now counting the um, the bars within there. And normally you wouldn't do it like this. You would use a set F and you would set this to sick and evaluate that, of course. And then you would do length sick. So length is another very um, fundamental function to know about. All right, so as a quick review, we have our functions here for um, generating lengths. We have many different techniques to do so. Then we, um, if we want to combine those, we set them equal to variables. Um, we can evaluate them multiple times using gen loop uh, rather than gen repeat. If we want to keep them the same, we use gen repeat. Um, and then with the flatten, we take a list, um, we take all of these messy kind of lists and we make one long list out of that to clean it up a little bit. And then after that, we can do a fit to span to fit it to certain certain length and we can do an OM and to time signature. You don't always have to use these, this fit to span, you don't have to use per se. You could also take a little bit closer attention to uh, generating the list of lengths here so that you don't have to do so much cleanup. Um, but these are sort of the, the safe ways. If you're freely explore, exploring and um, experimenting with these lengths, then uh, OM and to time signature and fit to span are, are very handy features, uh, functions, as well as assemble seek. These, these are really essential, especially the assemble seek. And we'll see it later on as well. We, we'll see some of these techniques when we're going to build our score and uh, we need to play, pay closer attention to organizing everything. Um, but first, we're going to talk about pitch in the next video.